Hello everyone, welcome back to the video series on BAS, Building Automation Systems. And so I'm going to take a little bit of a turn here and I'm going to start working with this uh, training simulator. And what this is, I'll open it up and show you, but it, it's a basically a BAS, Building Automation System, complete in a mobile portable box. Uh, we bought this through DDC Support Services. It comes with a lesson workbook, um, really good setup. So I'm going to be using some of their training materials to bring you through these courses along with a combination of mine. And uh, hopefully this will really help grab the concepts of BAS. So with that, let's open this up. I'll show you some of the uh, goods inside of it. So this thing's really uh, robust. It's a hard plastic case. It does have wheels. And it also has a handle. So let's get it opened up. It is heavy. I think it's 51 pounds or somewhere around there. Alright, so I'm going to zoom you in here and talk about some of the actual components. Um, so this would be some of the typical stuff that you would see in a job site, right? A building automation system at an actual site. Um, you have your controller. This is a uh, Jace, right? We talked about Jace 8000 in some of our previous videos. It's the microprocessor. Then you have the I/O input output module. This allows uh, 10 digital outputs and 8 analog outputs, um, and then 16 configurable inputs. Then you got a Ethernet port switch. So this is where you'll plug in the computer to access this all, or if you really wanted, you could plug directly into the Jace. Uh, but this also allows, if we had multiple of these portable systems, you could plug them in together. Um, you got a pilot relay, a status CT, a current transformer. So I believe this is the uh, CT here. Temperature probe, so you'd see this inside of an air duct. An actuator motor. So this would be used to control air dampers, water valves, and other items. You got a VFD, variable frequency drive. This would be a three-phase motor, um, could be controlling air handler system. Over here you got the RTU, rooftop unit controller. Uh, so this would be, you know, some people would just call it a heat, cool room thermostat. Here we got a FCU thermostat fan coil unit. Right here, number 12, we got a CO2 sensor, indoor air quality, ventilation control. And then here we got some of the digital output, analog output um, lights to kind of show what's on, what's not on. Uh, we got some testing ports for voltage, uh, the power, etc. So with that, we're actually going to power this thing on and I'm going to show you some of the basics of it and we'll do some testing as well. All right, so now let's boot it up. Um, we can start to go through some of the checklist items to make sure everything's up and running. Um, I didn't show you earlier, but this is the workbook that it comes with. So just following along on some of the steps to check that this unit is up and running. All right, so we've gotten the computer plugged in. We got an Ethernet cord plugged into the Ethernet port here, and then the network switch on the, the portable training system. I'm going to be taking you into the computer to show you what we're doing in here as well. So here you can see step two, we're going to open the control panel and change some of the uh, network adapter settings. We're going to go to network, change adapter options. We're looking at the ethernet port here. We're going to go properties, find IPv4 properties. And so if you're on the internet, you're going to be obtaining an IP address automatically this box here. Um, since we're trying to just get into the JACE, we are going to put an IP address of 10, 10, 10 .99 with a subnet of 255, 255, 255, 0. Click OK. We're going to save those. And now there's two ways to get into the JACE. One is through a web-based browser and the second one is through Java. Um, I'm going to be showing you the web base right now. 
you're going to open your web-based browser, go to 10.10.10.126 uh, for this unit. So you can see here, we've got a username. So there we are, we're inside the system now. Okay, so you can see the home startup page, really well put together. Not sponsored by DDC Support Services, but they made a great product for us. It's a very good training tool. And so um, the owner, John's allowed me to use some of the training material for these videos. So I'm very thankful for that. So I just want to give him a shout out. And so for this lesson, we're going to be going into lab exercises, lab one. Now you can see these are the actual devices across the top here. So here you can see rooftop unit controller. You got some of the current status and temperatures. Now if we go to the touchpad here, let's zoom in. You got a system mode, right? It's an auto. You got the fan setting, that's an auto. And now let's change some of these uh, input settings. And so you can see the cool status shut off here. And now I'm going to bring this back down. And now we we'll should see in the computer the cool status here, so change to on. All right, there you see it changed cool, on, fan, on. And it's going to try to cool the room down. So one thing to note here, uh, let's say the current values, 69 up and 64 down. If we go up 2 degrees, these current values would be 72 and 67. So that's a dead band of 5. Fixed differential, and that's considered the dead band between the heating and cooling set points. So now in the fan coil unit thermostat, you can see some of the statuses and uh, set points. So right now we're showing a room temperature of 75.5. So if we bring this up to 80 degrees, the heating demand should go up inside the J's controller. There it goes, heat and demand changed to 100%. So you can see it's a little bit slow. Um, it takes about 30 seconds to a minute. Um, obviously I'm editing that time out, so you don't have to wait the 30 seconds with me. And again, if we change the cooling down and waited another 30 seconds, uh, we would actually see this cooling demand jump up to 100% or whatever percentage needed to get the room to that temperature. Um, if you're in a Java-based system, this would be a lot quicker, um, almost instantly, uh, maybe a 5 or 10 second delay. So now we're going to take a look at the CO2 temp temperature, temp sensor. Tried to combine temperature and sensor, temperature. So we got room temp, the CO2 current levels. And so now if we bring this slide down all the way, you can see the room temperature set point change pretty quick. 50 degrees, we'll bring it all the way up. Room temperature set point 90. All right, so now let's take a look at the VFD. And you can see on our computer screen, we got off, off, zero hertz, 0 0.2. So I'm switch this to DI3. You're gonna see the VFD take off. On the computer screen, 10.7. Okay, so now if we adjust this CO2 sensor, temp sensor, all the way up, you're going to see the VFD take off. Computer screen shows 20 hertz, speed of 3.4 volts. So bring this all the way down. Let's see the VFD, and I'm not sure if you can see this on your screen here. Dropped all the way down to zero. Uh, computer screen showing 
0.2 hertz. Okay, now we're going to look at the actuator. And now the actuator is connected to the uh, CT, the current transformer. Uh, so those are tied together. That's giving us some of the information needed. So this is using the analog input 4. This is simulating a drive motor. So we're going to go 10%. And I don't know if you can see it, but this is turning very, very slowly. You might be able to hear it as well. And on our computer screen, we're actually seeing the position feedback is 16%. If we go to 50% on this dial, we see it on the computer screen slowly rising. And then again, you can see this orange notch here, slowly turning and adjusting. And that's simulating, uh, you know, a valve opening inside of an air handler or a damper or a water valve. You know, this can be used in a lot of different situations. So we'll bring this back down to zero. So now we're going to look at panel in out. This is just kind of demonstrating uh, links between inputs, outputs, um, and how they can integrate. And so if I push digital input one, you can see digital output one signal turns on, and then in the computer, it's going to switch. DI push button on, uh, DO one green light on. If I release it in the computer, they're both going to go to off. This could simulate uh, really anything out in the field. And then last but not least, the temperature probe here. So if we go to that on the computer, it's showing 73.6. If I hold it, just the tip should start to rise pretty quick, unless I am a cold-blooded animal. As you can see, jumped up a few degrees pretty quick. All right, so we're going to close out this. We're going to log out. That's it for today inside the Jace computer system. All right, everyone. So that was lesson one with the BAS training simulator. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too boring, but it was really to kind of establish a base of what this system looks like, some of the components inside. Lesson two, uh, hopefully get into more uh, HVAC situations or things that you're going to face out in the field. It's really helped me, and hopefully by creating these videos, it can help you. Again, you guys have been great with comments and feedback. Please keep those coming. Subscribe. Uh, hope to see you on Lesson 2 with this training simulator. Thanks for watching.